early evening, my friends. It is July 11, 2018, 4.43 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. All right, we're going to start with the Mimic chart here. This is where we look for our shark fins and our barrel rolls to uh, help give us a little extra time into forecasting possible hurricanes. Now, clearly we can see Category 2 Chris, which skyrocketed to a Category 2 throughout today. 105 mile per hour uh, gusts, about 90 sustained winds, give or take. Um, it is a Category 2 storm as of right now, though. We can also see... Um, hurricane slash tropical storm slash remnants of barrel, which is, uh, this is hours ago moving into present time. We can just begin to see how this is beginning to recollect right by the Bahamas and now still has a 50% shot of becoming a tropical cyclone, which is expected to take the same path as Chris, but there could be one little difference in that, and that is a dip in that high pressure we've been talking about that is pushing Chris away, that is actually molding up sooner than we thought, which may allow Barrel to affect the Carolinas. Now, I'm not trying to get anyone freaked out. We still have some time to look at this and analyze it. But this is not out of the realm of possibility, and we've been talking about barrel reforming um, for the last three or four videos now, and I also want to bring your attention to yet another situation which, in my opinion, will become an invest probably within the next 24 hours, and this is a wave coming off, once again, the west coast of um, Africa, and this was the wave I was talking about, which began to dissipate. We can see a little bit of dry air and a circular motion beginning right here. You're going to see it. it comes right through the Cape Verde Islands, and then it starts to barrel roll. That is not what I'm looking at, though, because that looks to be something that's going to dissipate. What I want you to see is right here. This is a very, very early um, forward momentum barrel roll counterclockwise movement that we usually do not see until these storms get about to this area. So we are already seeing the beginnings of this moving in a counterclockwise motion. Now, if this thing is an invest this far out, we're talking between the, the west coast of Africa and the beginning of the Leeward Islands is a lot of room for growth, okay? And the waters are warm. We've already had two storms that came off the west coast of Africa, which usually don't come until August. A lot of times our storms are forming down in this area. Um, this time of season, again, a lot of these rules do not long, any longer apply <clears throat> to forecasting hurricanes because so many things in weather have been changing. So, <clears throat> excuse me, guys. Sorry about that. With that said, current temperatures are just ridiculous. The middle of the country right now is just sweltering hot. Uh, we're not breaking many hundreds yet, but this is a muggy heat. Uh, we have a lot of lightning going on, which is associated with a lot of the thunderstorms passing through the U.S. So just a lot of activity, a lot of different pushing and pullings of lows and highs, which is what's messing up this dip in our high pressure that we're expecting to push Hurricane Chris and possibly Hurricane Barrel once again out into the ocean. Um, but at the same time, that is going to affect our friends in Nova Scotia. And then eventually, like we spoke, um, New fin Newfoundland, I believe. That's how you guys are telling me to pronounce it. Newfoundland. Um, I'm learning still, guys. Trust me, no disrespect whatsoever if I pronounce your home wrong. Um, I'm just trying to get the info to the people that live in those areas. There could be a serious clipping of Chris by... Um, uh, Nova Scotia, and then St. Pierre, to be exact, of Newfoundland. So that's what we're going to keep an eye on. We're obviously keeping an eye on these storms all over the U.S. and the the uh, the um, invest or the intensity marks around the Gulf are very high, which means they are very, very susceptible to cyclone formation. So this stuff could start forming in the Southern Caribbean. We need to watch that as well. But as of right now, we have Hurricane Chris, which is right here, a very um, distinct hurricane. We got our eye wall right there. Not so much a perfect circle like we've been seeing. It looks like it's developing, though. This thing may hit Category 3 status by the time it does get up past. Uh, looks like Jersey, Long Island. We're almost parallel um, to the upper northeast at this point. We have past Chesapeake Bay, basically, and this thing is clearly moving in a north um, eastern direction, which is good, okay? So chances are this thing will not hook back in. Barrel is another situation. Barrel has the potential to hook back into the U.S. I don't see that happening as of right now because a lot of the storm charts have changed. Clearly, this is the these are Chris's spaghetti plot shooting straight out. 
this shows it missing Nova Scotia altogether and then going right into New Finland. So that's what we need to watch out for is our friends in St. Pierre especially. And this thing could be a very strong storm by the time it gets there. So I will be watching that closely. Once again, these uh, sand charts are very useful because we are seeing two different waves here. This is the first wave I talked about the other day. Uh, you could see barrel being pushed by a heavy amount of air mass, which means the air is dense, there's sand involved in this, and it looks like it's pushing it. And then I spoke about this shark fin wave here in my last video, which seems to be collapsing on itself, but at the same time, that barrel roll wave we just spoke about right here is a big opening. So if we start seeing pink colors pushing behind this, that is going to aid in this thing starting to roll forward. And that is what is going to keep those storms clean together. And that is what you need to form hurricanes, guys. So we may be looking at letter D in invest. It may not be named for another week or two, which would bring us into just past the mid of July. But that would bring us to letter D um, in the month of July. That is not a weak hurricane season. That is the beginnings of a strong hurricane season. Uh, pretty much the exact opposite. So that is very important to understand. Uh, these articles about it being a weak season, we need to just kind of like push that aside for now. We need to look at the data straight up because the data is totally contradicting those articles. Now, landfall and hurricanes developing are two different things. Yes, maybe some of these won't hit land. It won't be as bad of a landfall season uh, like uh, Maria is doing in the uh, Western Pacific right now. Just totally demolished um, more land today and then is beginning to dissipate. I know I didn't do a lot of talking on that because I was trying to focus on the um, Atlantic Ocean season because I've, prom I've been promoting it a lot. Um, I haven't had as much time to put a lot of time into the video, so I'm trying to pick and choose the most um, important information for those that live around me and to keep my friends in these islands in the videos. Um, but trust me, I'm concerned with weather all over the world. Um, I'm interested in it. I would like to report on it, and I get to everybody as I can. It's all a matter of timing and, you know, the hours I work, stuff like that. It just it is what it is for now, guys. So trust me, I will touch on all this stuff. Um, with that said, so here we go. 50% cyclone formation every five days for hurricane, uh, past hurricane barrel, uh, which may reform and may follow the same path as Chris. So it may be no threat whatsoever, but when we look at some of the spaghetti plots for that storm, you can see that it kind of like wiggles in and out. There was one that came up and actually just curled this way, uh, which we don't want to see. That is not what we want. These would be the uh, spaghetti plots for barrel, they are taking a similar path to Chris. May not be an issue for the U.S., but nonetheless, we have to report on this stuff, guys. Look, this is barrel right here. A lot of reds, a lot of blowing up storms. And if these storms all begin to connect, we're going to start seeing that rotation based on the push of that sand from the Sahara Desert we just talked about. And then if I back this up, you can see how Chris was a very healthy hurricane tropical storm and then straight to category two within hours this thing blew up in the um right off the west or the east coast of the uh u.s here and this was a similar situation to hurricane jose now if this thing stuck around for two weeks we could call it jose, uh, jose two um based on last year so all right so i think i covered everything i know i was a little all over the place with this video but you know there's so much going on right now it's hard to even keep up if you don't make a video every couple hours, the info is basically um, outdated and use, uh, useless. So that's what we have to look at. So here we go. Once again, just to recap, here is Chris clearly in a, a tornado-like spin, very strong hurricane. Once it reaches Category 3, if it does, that would be considered a major hurricane. We have Barrel here about to reform. 50% chance it could do some... Um, uh, surf and and beach erosion damage to the Carolinas up into Virginia and the Delaware area. Not not set in stone yet. Do not take me that on that as a quote. And then we have this wave here, which could possibly become an invest. But then this one down here below the Cape Verde Islands, coming off a very southern area of the west coast of Africa already beginning to spin so i really am keeping an eye on that don't be surprised if that becomes an invest um like i said either within the next couple hours or even a day so all right that's where we're at for now guys um hopefully you enjoyed the video hopefully the info is helping um i know my updates are coming a little uh with a more gap of time in between but that is going to change i've been traveling um had to visit my parents you know um had a couple days off from work had to take advantage 
Uh, my girlfriend, the same thing. So she's been keeping me up to date with all this stuff. So once again, we can thank her for keeping this stuff running. If not for her, I don't know how I would get a lot of this stuff out. So uh, we're making a real good team doing this, these videos. And we really appreciate the support in the comments below. Um, a lot of you are there every single day. And it's just incredible to read some of this stuff. It's just very motivating. It, it really helps with the motivation and, and wanting to keep putting these videos out for you guys. Because that's what it's all about. It's all about sharing the info. Getting it out to as many people as possible, as early as possible. Whether or not these things form and do what they're expected to do, at least people know about them and they're not caught off guard. That is the entire point here. All right, with that said, I'm going to shut up now and let you guys listen to the video. Uh, any feedback below, please feel free. Ask your questions. I will get to them as I can. I will be heading back to southern Pennsylvania uh, this evening, actually probably within the next hour or so. Probably by 8, 9 o'clock, I'll be able to jump on here and start responding to some of you guys, and we'll go from there. All right, everyone, stay safe. Japan, um, absolutely devastating situation going on there. Over 140 people dead, many missing uh, because of these floods. The flooding began way before Maria, and now Maria is just adding to it. So that name will be retired. It was a major hurricane last year. It was a major typhoon this year. Um, time for that name to go away. I'm sure a lot of us don't ever want to hear the name again. No offense to the people named Maria. Um, I didn't mean for it to come out that way. Anyway, time for me to stop talking. All right, guys, thank you so much. We will talk very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.